time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to help equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about really a very common question that we get at Reasons to Believe is biochemist Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome, Fuzz. Krista, thanks. So we're going to talk a little bit about the idea of intelligent design. This is a very common term that we hear kind of floating around in science faith conversations. I always like to start conversations with a definition. So what is intelligent design? Well, I mean, in a nutshell, intelligent design is this idea that the universe and living systems bear the hallmarks of the work of an intelligent agent, uh, that they possess features that reflect the work of, uh, of a mind, and that science is able to actually detect that that mind's work, that's, that science is able to detect the work of the intelligent designer. Uh, in some respects, intelligent design is in contradistinction to this view that everything that we see in the universe and in living systems is ultimately the product of an unguided mechanistic process. Uh, and for those of us that are interested in using scientific evidence to make a case for the creator, really the concept of intelligent design is foundational. Uh, because if unless we are able to detect design through science in nature, then it's really hard to argue there's scientific evidence for a, a creator. So I'm wondering then, when you look at a ministry like ours at Reasons to Believe, would you see us as an intelligent design ministry or part of the intelligent design movement? How would you see Reasons to Believe fitting in that stream? Yeah, well, I would say that we are, uh, you know, advocating for intelligent design as part of our position at Reasons to Believe. And in some respects, we are part of the intelligent design movement, but yet we also stand apart and distinct from them because, as I mentioned, we're looking at using intelligent design as a way to demonstrate that the creator, not only is there a creator, but if that creator is the God of the Bible and that the, the scientific uh, sorry, that the creation passages in scripture have scientific credibility, which is far beyond what many people in the intelligent design movement are willing to do. They just want to make the case that intelligent design is science, whereas we want to use that argument for design to make a case for Christianity. I think that's a really important point, Fuzz, because we're trying to make the case uh, for the triune God of the Bible as being the, the creator. And we're tying it to the Bible specifically, to Christianity specifically. We're not just trying to make a case for an unnamed designer. Um, so I think that's an important distinctive to highlight of our approach. That makes me wonder though, why do you think that so many scientists are opposed to the idea of intelligent design? Yeah, yeah, Krista, in light of that question, let me first point out that uh, very few scientists would actually deny the fact that the universe appears to be designed and that uh, biological systems appear to be designed. For example, uh, Richard Dawkins, the fam famous evolutionary biologist and outspoken atheist has written that uh, biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. So here, even people like Dawkins acknowledge the appearance of design in biology, but yet many of these scientists would reject the idea that that design is bona fide design coming from the work of a mind, uh, not so much because of the evidence, but because of a philosophical framework in, in which science operates, which is a, a framework that uh, uh, adheres to methodological naturalism, which is this idea that in science, we have to operate as if God doesn't exist, as if the supernatural doesn't exist. And therefore, we can only posit natural process mechanistic explanations uh, for the universe and phenomena in the universe, which means that by definition, then, uh, scientifically speaking, that design must be the product of natural selection. It can't be the work of a mind. Well, then that makes me wonder, the next question that comes to my mind is, are there legitimate ways to, for science to detect design or are we only relegated to the realm of apparent design? Well, you know, that's a great question because it's interesting to me that there are a number of scientific disciplines 
that actually uh, are predicated on the ability of science to detect design that is the work of agency, that is the work of a, an intelligent designer. So for example, forensics, the, the science of crime scene investigation, uh, has the toolkits to, for investigators to determine if a body, uh, a human body is uh, dead because of natural processes or because of the work of a malevolent designer. Or SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, uh, is uh, able to determine if electromagnetic radiation coming from a distant uh, object in space is due to natural processes or the work of an intelligent civilization. Or even archaeologists can pick up a rock and say, well, that rock has been shaped by natural processes or the work of an agent. But what's also interesting is that all of these disciplines can tell us something about the purpose of the design, about the, about the motivation of the designer, even, even if we don't know the precise identity of the designer. And they can even go one step further and tell us something about the capabilities of the designer. And this is all within the purview of science. So why would we not then be able to apply those same criteria used by these disciplines to biology or to the universe and say, well, the universe or biological systems do indeed meet the criteria for being the work of an intelligent agent. And that would be strictly speaking scientific. So in that sense, it does seem like there's the, at least the hope or the possibility of intelligent design being a legitimate scientific enterprise to, to be able to probe whether what we see is a result of apparent design or actual design. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying is that if you re relax the requirements of methodological naturalism, now intelligent design can be a bona fide component of, of scientific investigation. And you know, to me, again, it's significant that we don't have to just stop at in, in evidence for intelligent design, but we can begin to uh, gain insight as to who that designer might be. And our contention is that that designer matches uh, the God of the Bible. Very good. Thank you, Fuzz, for helping us think through this very important question about our faith. And I do want to encourage all our viewers to go check out Fuzz's blog. It's called The Cells Design, and it's available at reasons.org.